Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. My name is Nikita from BISP Solution. In this session, we are going to discuss about time and labor with global payroll. So I'm going to give you an overview how we can integrate time and labor with global payroll. So let's start today's session. So our objective is to get time and labor integrated with global payroll application. So we can get everyone paid accurately. Generally, that means our time and labor inputs that are hours worked or hours taken have to be convertible to earnings element or deduction element on the payroll side. And that involve these consideration among others for prerequisite setup. So how our time entry is configured, what time periods are we using for time entry versus payroll processing and the payroll transfer process of calculated time going from time and labor to payroll. And how we are going to resolve any errors that may occur during that transfer. So payroll in any country is a complex setup and maintenance process. Remember all of the inputs, not only from the time and labor, but from the core HR benefit compensation, plus there's all of other payroll setup itself. It takes a lot of effort and processing to get us all paid. Right. So as there is uh, with absence management, we have prerequisite setup tasks in both global payroll and in time and labor to integrate these two applications, right? There are two tasks for payroll administrator. They create payroll earnings element in the functional setup manager that's uh, within setup and maintenance. And they confirm that the field label time card required is selected for each time reporter on their assignment. It's uh, this field that promoted payroll processing to look for time to be populated from time and labor on the time and labor side. We generate a time attribute for the data dictionary and can generate time guard fields if needed. Okay. So we know there are many steps to configure payroll, but our focus is on payroll earnings element for use in time cards, right? So elements can be set up as hour based or unit based um, in the time and labor an example of unit based element might be for uh, piece work uh, where a person is paid based on the number of unit produced more often though time and labor elements are hours based and people are paid a certain rate for hours work we, de we, uh, we deliver the time attribute for element payroll time type the process to create additional time card elements associated those elements with an LDG and the time card category. The process automatically generate related payroll element formula and calculation component. So it actually takes a bit longer than when we create other objects. Right. So then we run generate data dictionary for the time attributes and then optionally you can run the generate time card fields. There are there is a process for that. But time and labor administrator can create time card fields manually, which uh, during implementation, it's common to have process uh, like uh, these scheduled to run daily. But when you get into maintenance, then you have to remember to run it. Right. Then. Next, how are we going to make the time card fields available on the time card, right? So creating the time card fields is a part of the time and labor setup that leads to creating time layout set that determine what our time reporters will see on their time cards. To get you started, we deliver a payroll layout set that include delivered payroll time card fields like payroll time type and assignment number. You can begin using it to select from payroll time type or we can create dependent fields for payroll costing information like cost center or work locations. And of course, you can create additional payroll layout setup using the delivery set as a template. Okay. Then we have time period consideration. Submitting a time card initiate the approval process and the reporting period and the approval period need to match. We deliver weekly, bi-weekly and monthly time card periods with time and labor. And we will also deliver semi-monthly time card period, right? So, but uh, let's say your uh, 
ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और प्रोसेस पेरोल सेमी मंथली बट यू स्टिल वॉन्ट योर एम्प्लॉयज टू इंटर टाइम वीकली बिकॉज ऑफ ओवर टाइम कैलकुलेशन वेल दैट्स वे योर टाइम प्रोसेसिंग रूल्स कम इन टू प्ले वॉट यू नीड टू कंसिडर ऑल्सो इंक्लूड्स हाउ यू विल ग्रुप योर वर्कर्स प्रोसेस देयर टाइम फॉर द पेरोल ट्रांसफर एंड दैट्स वे योर एच सी एम ग्रुप्स हेल्प आइडेंटिफाई सबसेट ऑफ वर्कर्स दैट प्रोसेस टूगेदर ओके once the time card are submitted it goes through the approval process and to get you started we deliver a rule that automatically approves a time card that submitted with 40 hours or less for the week if it's over 40 hours for the week it routes to the line manager for approval with this rule but you have additional consideration right not everyone work schedule is 40 hours a week or a week for that matter so this rule doesn't apply for every situation but most important to know at this point is that time has to be approved before it can be transferred to the global payroll so this is a description of and the overview of the integration between time and labor with the global payroll i hope this is clear to you so thank you so much for watching the video